Hello and welcome to Toby Sonics. Please like, subscribe, follow, you know the drill. It is Tuesday the 19th of January 2021 and I hope you're all managing to stay happy and healthy in these increasingly difficult and crazy times. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at a free plugin, the Chow Tape Model. So here we are on GitHub where you can download the Chow Tape Model for three. And it's described here as physical modeling for analog tape machines, originally based on the Sony TC260. The current version can be used to emulate a wide variety of reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. And rather than use a set of practice tracks or loops, we're going to be testing out the Chow Tape model on one of my own productions, my new single, Eye of the Storm. What we're listening to now is the stripped down drum beat from the chorus, just the kick and the snare. Let's take the chow tape model out of bypass. And you can see here, we're using a good old fashioned preset, gritty. That's it, I haven't touched anything, dropped it on, love the way it sounded. Let's have a listen, let's hear what it's doing for that snare. I love the texture that this is bringing to it. It's bringing a really nice kind of crisp, kind of spanking, kind of sharp texture. It really help it stand out against the kick. Next up, we've dropped in the bass line. And once again, you're listening to the raw production and the chow tape model is in bypass. Let's drop the chow tape model out of bypass and once again we're using ourselves a preset we've got the bass pusher one this time i had a little bit of a play with it and i've introduced a touch of flutter which has got a little bit of depth just to help the bass kind of sit up in the mix let's have a listen and see if that's working for you guys or not Right away, I'm liking that little bit of extra presence and variation that the flood is bringing in. It was pretty cool as well to be able to dial in the rate so it sat nicely with the pace of the bass line. It was easy and intuitive to do it like that. There is a bit of a nasty sort of draggy frequency coming in there in the low mids, which I'm not such a big fan of. I was actually using this in production. I think I'll be backing that saturation off a bit and seeing if we can get that to sound a little bit better. Drop the hi-hat in, chow tape and bypass. Let's see what the chow tape can do for this hi-hat. Alrighty, let's drop the chow tape model in and there's a couple of things we're doing differently. First off, we're dialing in from the default setting, no preset. Secondly, we're using the wet dry mix. And thirdly, we're using the degrade option. Let's have a listen and see what that's doing for our hi-hat. I'm really liking what this is doing here. It's taming the hi-hat really nicely. It's getting rid of those kind of sort of SC kind of things that you usually have to stick a DS on to deal with it. It's really kind of getting it to sit in the mix, but it's doing it in a way where you're getting that kind of variance. It's kind of shifting it, making it move. And it's making it feel that little bit wider. It's kind of opening up the middle of the mix for other elements and giving you some shift in the width. added the claps into the mix chow tape module in bypass let's see what we can do with it all right then drop it out of bypass we're back on the preset lo-fi and we've had a little bit of an adjustment we've gone to the chew option and we've added that in One of the original designs of this rhythm section was that the clap should be in 
front of the snare. I wanted a sat back snare for this particular production. What I really like about what the tape model is doing is that it's just pulling that, it's just pulling the claps forward and wider in the production. Here we go with one of my favorite virtual instrument sounds. It's the UVI dark light, the bit heat. It's the sound from the beginning of Michael Jackson. Beat it, any excuse I have to use it, I will use it. Alrighty then, let's take the chow tape model out of bypass. We're back to just using a default setting. We're playing with the speed and we're adding a little bit of wow. Let's see what that does for the bit heat. Pushing the rate up on the wow, I found that I could just get that little bit of variance of the sustain on the bit heat. Just helping it to stand out in the mix just that little bit. And then by varying the tape speed, just change the kind of thickness and kind of timbre and kind of weight of its voice. So here we go with the main featured instrument of the entire production, the Vapor Synth. All right then, let's drop the child tape model out of bypass. A couple of things we're playing with here. We're playing with the hysteresis mode, the tape speed, and also the bias. Right off the bat, I wish I had this thing when I was working on the production. I never quite got that vapor to have the flavor that I wanted it to have. I like what this is doing. There was a sound in my head. This is getting close. The tape speed, first off, balancing off the tape speed versus what we were doing with the bit crush, really interesting, really helps you get some contrast. The bias, very cool and shifting the sort of tone, kind of timbre of the instruments. We've got a little bit of flutter going on too. It's giving us a bit of movement, giving us a little bit of width. And then finally, hysteresis mode. This is very, very subtle, but it adds a certain texture to it. All right, let's do a good old fashioned before and after. We'll start with all the child tape models in bypass, and then I'm gonna bring them in one after another in the order that we worked on them. Really 
interesting listening to them blend in one after another, particularly when we got to the hi-hat and the clap. And the hi-hat came in, I'm like, okay, yeah, I like it like that. I like what the tape emulation's doing to it. Then you put the clap in and I thought, well, actually, no, now those two things seem to be kind of muddying each other up a little bit. But once we put the bit heat and the vapor in, I'm thinking, actually, yeah, I kind of like them now because it's kind of pairing them together as these two kind of percussive forces. It's kind of cool like that. Baseline saturation, still not loving that. There's a little bit of a draggy sound in there. I would definitely clear that out if I was using it in a production, but I do like the variation it's given it. What I really like is how much the chow tape model will let you move things around the stereo field, create width, depth, shifting textures, the different options for creating variation to contrast between the different elements in your production, the ability to be able to create sort of thickening um, senses of thickening and weight, uh, texture, timbre, being able to place it in the production. Very cool, very organic. If this plugin was going for 50 euros, 100 euros, it'd be extremely tempting. Free? It's a no brainer. Go get it. Go get it right now. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, follow. You know the drill. Eye of the Storm is out tomorrow. Please, please, please check it out. Have a listen to the production. If you have any questions about the production whatsoever, feel free to leave them in the comments below or ask me on social media at Toby Sonics. I'm on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, VK, you name it. I'm there. Thank you for watching. Until next Tuesday, good night and good noise. Stay safe and stay healthy. Welcome to the running man. J